Hey guys, today here at Full Circle Music, I'm gonna be going over how to professionally record vocals. Now, as a full-time songwriter and producer here in Nashville, I've had the opportunity to work with many great artists, some that you probably know and have heard on the radio. But what I've learned through my years of recording professional artists is there's no one setup for recording vocals. It all depends on the voice, the room, and the song. So this is gonna be a very simplified way of explaining everything that I'm doing when preparing for a vocal recording. And don't worry, you won't need tons of expensive equipment or a bunch of third-party plugins. For this video, we're gonna be using Logic Pro and all of its default plugins. We're also gonna be posting a video on how to edit these raw vocals to give it that professional radio-ready sound that really makes the song pop. You can do this all on your laptop, in your bedroom, wherever you are. So excited that you're here for this tutorial, and I truly believe that if you stick around for these next few minutes, it'll take your vocal production to the next level. All right, let's get started. All right, so let's jump in. We are going to be doing vocals today. I'm gonna sing them myself. Disclaimer, I'm not the best singer in the world, but I can make myself with these tools that we have right in front of us. I can make myself sound pretty dang okay. <laughs> At least good enough for a demos. I've, I've, I've done my own records in the past and it's that saying of everybody hates their own voice the most. Anyway, this song that I'm going to be showing you as an example song today is a song called Can't Take Me Anywhere. I wrote it, the chorus of it. I had the idea when sitting in a dentist chair getting my teeth drilled. I have no idea why that happened, but literally the entire chorus was like written in my head by the time the dentist had the filling done. It's crazy. So then I brought it into the co-writing room that day and, and, and I threw it down really quick. And I showed it to my co-writer that day. He's a guy named Sam Tenez. You may have heard of him. He's an amazing artist. Got tons of great stuff right here on YouTube. We'll give you some links to check out his stuff. And uh, this song, Can't Take Me Anywhere, we ended up finishing that day and it's going on his new record, which is coming out. But today I'm gonna be doing my vocal version of it for you so you can see exactly what my vocal process is and so that you can take these tips and techniques and apply it to your own production. So, all right, let's go ahead and jump in. As you can see, I've got Logic Pro open right in front of me. Really what I would start anytime doing, anytime I'm recording a vocal, is you, you, you wanna make sure you got the setup right. The setup ultimately, um, before we jump into too much on, on, on Logic, I'll talk you through a little bit. Setup does involve your DAW, which in this case, we're using Logic Pro. And for this video, I'm gonna be using only stock Logic plugins. And so the setup obviously is, you know, creating a track and that's pretty simple. You just create a track. You can create multiple tracks if you want to. For this purpose, I usually just start with one. You always wanna make sure you are naming your stuff as you go. I've got an instrumental of the track as we're currently working on it. It's currently in production. And I've actually got his lead vocal that we have recorded as well. So we can A, B it and I'll show you how you can get some of the same type of quality using this sort of lower end uh, equipment and plugins. So, so that's, that's really how you get started in the DAW. Now let's talk a little bit about the mic. The mic today that I'm using is this mic right in front of me, it's it's, a, it's called a Shure SM7B. The reason I, I chose to use this is because number one, it's the mic that I have in front of me every day. It's very versatile and it responds well to so many different types of voices. Whether it's a male voice, a rock voice or a whispery female voice. Like I, I've just, I've used them on everything and they just tend to, they just work. I don't know why, but like Michael Jackson used it on his Thriller record. It's been on U2 records. It's been on, I mean, you name it. It's been on the record probably. So if you're in a bedroom and you've got a laptop and an interface and this mic, that's good enough to get going. So obviously you got the mic, you got the SM7, you got the cable. I'm not really gonna go into too much detail on that. You need an XLR cable that will connect from the mic to the interface, make sure that's hooked up. And then ultimately a big part of the setup is having your room pretty deadened as well too. So. I'm here in my room, um, as you can see, it's pretty big wide open studio. And uh, you know, it's very well treated. I'm, I'm, this is a pro level studio, but I've had great results working in bedrooms, the back of tour buses while we're driving down the road. And that's why I, like this mic is great if you're in a bedroom, if you're in a closet, like I've had, I've been in a hotel room where it's just super echoey and we literally just grab the comforter and put it on top of our heads to make like a tent almost. And, and, and that's good enough to deaden the sound. We've done the same thing in tour buses where um, I work with this band for King and Country and on, on their song Priceless, we were actually writing it and working, going down the hill, going down the road. 
and uh, the bus engines roaring in the background. There's nothing perfect about the vocal tracking setup, but he has this little SM7, he's holding it in his hand, gets under like three layers of blankets in his bus bunk, and it sounds great. Like you can barely hear the background noise. And yeah, there is gonna be some background noise, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can kind of get rid of it. So, so that's a big thing is wanting to make sure you have the room as dead as possible. And if worse comes to worse, you throw a blanket on top of your head. Now, if you wanna go the condenser mic route, I do have the Slate uh, VM1, I believe it's called. It's their big, large diaphragm condenser vocal mic. Over the years, we've had U47s, we've had C12s, we've got a, uh, a U67 in the other room. They're all great. Nowadays, the technology is so affordable and the Slate mic allows you to model a lot of those other vintage mics. But um, in that case, when you're using a condenser, you're gonna really wanna make sure that the room is deadened. Otherwise, it's gonna pick up all of that uh, slap back and echo that you'll, you'll hear when we start really diving into the mixing portion in, in, a, in a later video. So that's really the setup, the mic, the cable, the interface. In this case, I'm using the Universal Audio, which I'll show you, the Universal Audio Apollo system. I've been using this for years now, I love it. Uh, but I've also used Focusrite and a bunch of other ones that don't even cost that much. So what I love about this setup with the Universal Audio is you can control the gain structure. You can control the, the it's basically would be the same thing as me turning a knob up or down on my interface. So if you have a focus right and you bend over to turn the knob down, it's just right by where you plug the mic in, this does the exact same thing. And so that is your input gain. So ultimately a big part of the setup is making sure that you have the gain structure set properly on your uh, on your interface. You don't want it to be too quiet to where you have to gain it up and you're getting tons and tons of noise on the track and tons of hiss, but you also don't want it to be too hot to where it's like clipping and distorting. Um, with an SM7, you do have to put quite a bit of gain behind it, but as you can see, even as I'm talking, it's peaking, so that's gonna be way too loud. Um, I've currently got, uh, you don't need, I don't think you typically need phantom power for an SM7, so you can turn that off, obviously. Um, some interfaces have the option of having a low cut uh, filter on it. I don't worry too much about that. The SM7 has one built into it itself, and I, I generally just leave that, uh, that switched onto it. And then, so yeah, the gain structure is going to be a really key component that so many people overlook. It's not even, it's not a hard thing to do. You just want it so that your vocal levels are somewhere in this range, in between that minus 12, and you know zero range when it's metering. So if you're singing loud parts of the song, then you're gonna obviously wanna gain it down. If you're singing the quiet verse parts of the song, you wanna gain it up. Like, you know, whenever they do Billie Eilish records and she's holding the mic in her hand in her room, I'm sure they have it gained to kingdom come just to make sure that she's getting all that little detail, that clarity. Now let's talk a little bit about proximity effect. Proximity effect is basically how far you are, how far the singer is from the microphone. The closer you're going to be to the microphone, the more low-end woomph, I call it, you're going to have. You're going to have more bottom end. So when you hear those P's, or if they're singing in a low register, it's going to pick up a lot of that warmth. So that can be a good thing. Uh, it's really pronounced on large diaphragm condenser mics like the Slate or the U67 or the U47 um, that I mentioned. With the SM7, it's kind of foolproof to where like you really don't even have to have that great of mic technique in terms of placing placing yourself and moving yourself like it just generally this mic was made for like radio broadcasters so they're like right in it sometimes like this like when i record luke from for king and country he's literally like right in it he's touching it and the other thing you'll notice with the sm7 is i don't have a pop filter in front of me um, a pop filter as you can see by the image on the screen this is a pop filter and uh, a pop filter you're going to use when you're using a large diaphragm condenser. And you absolutely must have that. It's gotta be a couple inches off the mic. But with the SM7, it kinda has this little fuzzy pop filter built right into it. So, so that's gonna be a really important thing. You got the mic, you got the cable, you got the interface, which we've gone over, and the, uh, the pop filter. And we, we talked a little bit about, about the gain structure. And then the other big thing is just gonna be your monitoring setup. So. Right now, I'm just monitoring through headphones. It's a great way to record vocals. You can hear all the little details. And um, in, in Logic Pro, uh, I'll, I'll start diving in here a little bit on the DAW side. So here we've got Logic Pro. The first thing is obviously setting up that vocal track. 
in Logic, there is a mode that if you right click up here at the top and you go to customize control bar display, there's a thing called low latency mode. You pretty much always want to make sure that's selected when you're recording vocals. I, I don't really know why they have that as an option. Like you would think it should just kind of be always be low latency, but it's just a mode that they have that whenever you're recording, make sure that that little low latency mode knob is turned on. And then when you're not recording, flip it off. And I think it uh, conserves some of the CPU power and it lets all the plugins be active. So let's just get started here. Um, so I'm going to start on my vocal tracking track. I'm going to record enable it. I'm going to input enable it. And as you can hear, the, the level, or as you can see on the meter, the level will definitely need cranked up. But let's, let me go ahead and play a little bit of the track just so I can kind of get a sense of where this is going to sit here. There you go. Okay, so there's my track. So I'm just going to start singing along a little bit on this. And um, I am going to pull the lyric up in front of me just so I don't forget what I am singing. That's another thing with setup is, is making sure that you have your lyric in front of you. That's super, super important. I'm just pulling it up on my iPhone. Most singers nowadays just have it on their, um, just have it on their iPhone. And so that's what I've just got in front of me. So, uh, all right, I'll just go ahead and start singing a little bit of the chorus and we'll adjust the gain structure as we go. Two, three. I am a wrecking ball, I am a hand grenade Cause once you pull the pin, you better walk away Can't take me anywhere, you better leave me home Don't need a sabotage, I do it on my own My mama told me once, my teacher told me twice If you like trouble baby, then I'm your paradise You wanna take me here, you wanna take me there But I'ma warn you now, can't take me anywhere Okay, so that's a pretty good gain structure. As you can see, this is, I'm, I'm actually really glad I just did this because you may have pushed record and then you realize, where's the audio? This is a great example of what not to do. But in that case, I was just setting the gain structure anyway. So I'm happy with where that's hitting, right around in that range. But the big thing is setting your correct input channel. So in this case, input two is what I'm actually connected to. So let's actually do it again and we'll start actually recording it into Logic. So uh, we'll just start from the top, two, three. I am a wrecking ball, I am a hand grenade Cause once you pull the pin, you better walk away Can't take me anywhere, you better leave me home Don't need a sabotage, I do it on my own And one thing I like to do with vocals is I like to take it section by section Some singers and some songs, they prefer to just go all the way through um, But for most songs like this, especially that are pop Just to get a nice big breath for the next section, I like to do them a section at a time. Um, really a big part of the setup is just making sure you have an environment that you feel confident, that you feel comfortable, that you're monitoring. Like right now, I don't have any plugins on it right now. I like to generally listen to it pretty dry. Um, so it gives me, gives me the truth while I'm singing. Um, there are instances where when I'm using more of, the, more of my top end plugins like Auto-Tune, um, Autotune Pro, I can sing through Autotune, so it will it will kind of give me that live pitch correction. And then I also like this plugin called uh, CLA Vocals. You don't need those; you don't have to have those. Um, if you want to give yourself a little bit of hype on your vocal track, I usually just do an EQ, pull up a pull up a a, a channel strip EQ, and give it something like this. Cut out a little bit of the low end, might crank up the high end a little bit, so you can. Get, get it a little more hyped. And oftentimes people, singers like singing with a lot of compression on their vocals. So this is the Logic Pro compression plugin. Um, I like this Studio FET version that they have of it. Um, we'll just do a, a, a fast attack and a, and a slow release. Don't worry if you don't know, you know the, the science behind the compressor settings. When you're starting out, it's just turning the knobs until they sound good. But basically when you're talking about compression and we'll dive more into this in the mix, part it's the threshold is where the compressor kicks in this meter is how much is getting taken off of it how much is getting compressed so right now you can see it's hitting around that minus 10 db and ratio is how sharp the uh you can think of it as like an angle how how sharp is that compressor kicking in so it's almost going to make it sound more grabby the higher you turn the ratio up and then of course makeup gain is for every part that you're taking off you're going to usually want to make that back up so 
Um, as you can see, it's starting to just get a little more present sounding. And so that's compression. The other thing that a lot of singers like is reverb. So, you know, I like Logic's just stock silver verb. Sounds really good. One of my favorite plugins of all time is the Valhalla Vintage Verb, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to be using uh, this just to show everything that you can do with the built-in uh, Logic plugin. So let's try that one more time. Now, one thing that I like to do in Logic is to use their uh, comping tool. So I'm going to leave this track right here, and then I'm just going to start recording over top of it, and that's going to automatically... Uh, that's basically going to automatically create like different lanes that I can comp, which I'm going to show you in a later video. So let's just take another take of it. Um, felt okay about that one, but still, still getting my voice warmed up. Here we go. I am a wrecking ball. I am a hand grenade. Cause once you pull the pin, you better walk away. Can't take me anywhere. You better leave me home. Don't need a sabotage. I do it on my own. Okay, so that one felt better. I, I generally want to give myself a few takes that I can have for comp options. So let's go ahead and do another one. And we'll start one more time. One, two, three. I am a wrecking ball. I am a hand grenade. Cause once you pull the pin, you better walk away. Can't take me anywhere. You better leave me home. Don't need a sabotage. I do it on my own. Okay, so I feel, I feel pretty good between what we've got there. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to literally Apple D duplicate the track. And I'll show you why I'm going to do this, do it this way uh, in a later comping video, why I want them on two separate tracks. Um, there are instances where I have trouble with a line or a singer has trouble with a line and you want them to just loop it over and over and over again. And I'll show you how we do that here in, in a moment as well. Uh, there are just certain lines and certain words that tend to be like not the sweet spot of a singer's vocal range. So, so in those cases, you'd want to try that looping mode. So um, let's go ahead and do the next section. We'll kind of repeat the same process. Do a few takes of it. Don't need a sabotage. I do it on my own. My mama told me once. My teacher told me twice. If you like trouble, baby, then I'm your paradise. You want to take me here. You want to take me there. But I'm gonna warn you now, can't take me anywhere. Okay, that's pretty good. I can get a little more, a little more swag. It's kind of a Sabotage, punky thing. I do it on my own. My mama, one more time. Sabotage, Two, I do it three. on my own. My mama told me once, my teacher told me twice. If you like trouble, baby, then I'm your paradise. You wanna take me here, you wanna take me there. But I'm gonna warn you now, can't take me anywhere. Okay, now I'm going to do a couple more takes, but before I do, I want to talk a little bit about what are we going for here when we are capturing great vocals? Because ultimately, it doesn't matter what DAW you're recording in or what your gear is. The key elements of having a great vocal are ultimately your performance, which is comprised of your timing, your emotion, your pitch, and your timing. Those are really the big things, the emotion, the feel, the pitch, and the timing. And obviously, attitude is kind of something that you can just hear um, you can hear when a singer is singing something or you can hear when a singer is like really delivering it. So ultimately, that's what you want to go for is the emotion. You can fix pitch. You can fix timing. Tone is hard to fix, but you want to make sure your tone and your emotion are definitely there. If if you're skewing towards like which ones are the most important, make sure the tone and the emotion are there. You can always fix pitch and timing. So let's just do a couple more. I had a couple things that I was hearing that I didn't like as much on, on this time. So I'm gonna do a couple more passes, maybe one more pass. Touch, Two. I do it on my own. Touch, Two. I do it on my own. My mama told me once, my teacher told me twice. If you like trouble, baby, then I'm your paradise. You wanna take me here, you wanna take me there. But I'm gonna warn you now, can't take me anywhere. Okay, so I like that approach better. So what I'm going to do with that in mind, I was like singing it harder and I was smiling a little bit. And that's one trick is like if you're if you're struggling with getting your vocals brighter, just smiling while you're doing it or having the singer smile while you do it can make it just pop out front more and give it more presence. So I'm going to do the first part with that approach. One, two, three. I am a wrecking ball, I am a hand grenade Cause once you pull the pin, you better walk away 
Can't take me anywhere. You better leave me home. Don't need a sabotage. Jeez. I do it on my own. My mom. Okay, I felt that one better. That one, that one had more energy to it. So um, that's essentially the process of. I'm, I'm, I'm really just focusing on one section of the song for this video. This is the chorus of the song, and uh, in a later video, I'll show you how we actually. Um, you know, begin to start flying things around, copy pasting things around, and how we actually start constructing the song and arranging it. But um, for now, that's really the process of doing a lead vocal. So ultimately, take as many takes as you need. You know, you, you want to make sure it's amazing. If it takes you a thousand takes to do it, the, the end listener is not going to know that, and they're not going to care. All, all they care about is the end performance. Like, if it's one word, um, well, let me just show you. Let me just show you. Like, let's say you're really having trouble with the first line of the of, of the last section. I'll show you what what th this is kind of a hack. This is what I would call just loop loop recording. So I'm going to mute the take that I just did. And so let's say there was like a pesky trouble line, like the first line of the last half. I kind of actually noticed that when I was listening back, like I thought I could sing that better. So you just do the same line over and over and over again, and then you just take the best one. So so something like this. You better leave me home. Don't need a sabotage. I do it on my own. My mama told me what. 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 Okay, I like that last one. So you can you can kind of see like as you sing it a few times, you can kind of start to settle into it and you can kind of get the get the vibe a little a little better and really just form your mouth and 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 make sure it's sitting right. So I'm gonna take that last one, I'm gonna put it in my relative grid mode, and then I'm gonna drag it over so it lines up with the other ones. And we'll put that on, uh, let's see. So we still have all the takes. If I if I click and drag these over, they're still there, but that's that's the one I, I definitely like better than, than all the other ones. So um, we'll call that our, our take for now. This is not comped, it's not timed, it's not tuned or anything. Um, but that's those are a couple options. You can also do like, if you feel like you just wanna sing a section back to back, you can also do the whole section similarly to that. And that's, that's called loop recording. So let's say you wanted to just sing the, the back half um, a few times over and over again. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is you wanna set the loop and that's where you just click on this bar up in the top of logic, set it, I, I always like to put it in bar mode because it makes it snap to the bars and set it before you start singing and make sure that it ends after you start singing. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna loop around like this. And as you can see, this was where the back half started. So it should be like this. And sometimes you may wanna give yourself even a little more room. So you might even give yourself an extra bar on the front end. Sabotage, I do it on my own. My mama told me once, my teacher told me twice. If you like trouble, baby, then I'm your paradise. You wanna take me here, you wanna take me there. But I'm gonna warn you now, can't take me anywhere. And then you just let it keep looping and it'll go around again. I do it on my own. My mama told me once, my teacher told me twice. If you like trouble, baby, then I'm your paradise. You wanna take me here, you wanna take me there. But I'm gonna warn you now, can't take me anywhere. And some singers like doing it that way too. There's no, there's no right or wrong. I'm just giving you a few different options. The way that you can, uh, you, you want to just make sure that your record, record, repeat is on if you've got it in loop mode. As you can see, I just did like a quick punch in when it looped back around. But um, record, record, repeat is going to be that method of doing it. So that's a few different methods of getting the lead. I think overall I like what we had better on this lead. So um, we talk a little bit about you know the, the leads. Really, ultimately, we talked about the performance. Um, let's talk a little bit about tracking background vocals and doubles. One thing that makes a song that you that most listeners wouldn't even realize is a huge part of the uh, the emotion of a song is the background vocals. It's the vocal arrangement. It's the doubles, which a double essentially is just singing the same thing back to back, and the harmonies are different notes sung on top of the other ones to kind of give them lift and emotion and dynamics. So. Um, on this type of song, because of how energetic it is and how big the track gets later on, 
I, I want to probably have a good left and a right double. So I've got the lead vocal and I've got a left and a right. Um, sometimes I like to comp it first, but in this song, my timing is, is, is fairly consistent from take to take. Um, so I'll go ahead and just double to what's there. So I'm going to create a new vocal track. I'm going to name my other ones. Here's my other ones, double track. And then, yeah, you can, you can copy paste those same settings, those same track settings if you want to, just to give yourself that hype. And then one thing, when you're listening back, people's ears are so used to hearing things with pitch correction on. And, you know, again, I use auto-tune typically, but this is, uh, and I use Melodyne as well too. So you're gonna wanna make sure the song key is set correctly. This is a song in the key of C, C major. I'll set the response time around 40 milliseconds, and then I'll just copy that over to my other channel. So then when I hear it back. I am a wrecking ball, I am a hand grenade, cause once you pull the pit. Like it sounds, it sounds a little more pro already. Um, and so yeah, with the double, what I'm gonna do is just go over top of it and I'm gonna sing the same exact thing and try to match it as tight as I can. And, and matching it is really important. So let's just, let's try that. One, two, three, three. I am a wrecking ball. I am. And then once again, newbie newbie amateur over here. <laughs> uh, input two. You want to make sure your input is set correctly. Here we go. One, two, three. I am a wrecking ball. I am a hand grenade. Cause once you pull the pit, you better walk away. Can't take me anywhere. You better leave me home. Don't need a sabotage. I do it on my own. My mama told So that, that felt pretty good. I mean, I could hear there's like stuff I could have done better, but for the sake of what we're doing here for rock and roll, it's close enough. What I typically do with doubles is I'll pan them left and right. As you can see, this will be my dub L, this will be my dub R. And I like to put the pitch correction on the tracks after I've just recorded them so it sounds nice and tight in the pocket. So here is my uh, second double for that same section. I am a wrecking ball, I am a hand grenade Cause once you pull the pin, you better walk away Can't take me anywhere, you better leave me home Don't need a sabotage, I do it on my own My mama told Okay, so that's pretty good. And you can already hear when you listen back, like you just play it, it already sounds I am a wrecking ball, I am a hand grenade And we'll go ahead and put the pitch correction on it so we can Hear it nice and tight. Again, this is just the stock logic. All these plugins are logic plugins. I am a wrecking ball. I am a hand grenade. Cause once you pull the pin. One thing that you'll notice with low latency mode is if you have an input monitor on, it will turn the plugins off. So if you click on a certain channel and that comes up, it will turn off pitch correction and some of the plugins that take uh, that create latency. So if you want to listen back and make sure you're hearing all the plugins, just make sure nothing is on this input monitor. I am a wrecking ball, I am a hand grenade Cause once you pull the pin, you better walk away Can't take me anywhere Okay, so that's, that's sounding pretty good. So let's go ahead and do the back half doubles. Um, I'll just do these on the same track for now. Check, check, check. As you can hear, it disables the pitch correction, which is a good thing. I'm, what I'm just doing is punching in. I'm, I've, I've got this on a uh, right click up here allow quick punch in, and I, I just literally hit R for record when it gets to the right spot. I do it on my own. My mama told me once. We'll start that one more time. I do it on my own. And we'll drag this back over. Turn the snap off. I do it on my own. My mama told me once. My teacher told me twice. If you like trouble, baby, then I'm your paradise. You wanna take me here. You wanna take me there. But I will warn you now. Can't take me anywhere. Okay, so that, that felt pretty good. We'll go ahead and drag that down to the one right below it. You want to make sure that when you're dragging that your snap is turned on so it doesn't move from where you just recorded it. And let's do one more double. Sabotage, I do it on my own. My mama told me once, my teacher told me twice. If you like trouble, baby, then I'm your paradise. You want to take me here. You want to take me there, 
but I'm gonna warn you now, can't take me anywhere. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, those doubles feel relatively tight, tight enough to be edited later on. Um, what I might do from here is once I've got the lead and the doubles, I might start adding some harmony to that. And one, one trick that I like to teach in vocal production is add a new thing each section. So let's say the chorus is, um, in this case, it's a, it's a longer chorus. So the back half, to give it a little bit of lift, I'm going to add a harmony on the back half. So same process, I just duplicate the track, rename it. That's not BG21, it's BG1, background one. You can kind of come up with your own ways of naming things. Um, so let's go ahead and try a harmony on the back half. Sabotage, I do it on my own. My mama told me once, my teacher told me. Let's check that one more time. My Sabotage, mama told me once, I do it hey. on my own. My mama told me once, my teacher told me twice. If you like trouble, baby, then I'm your paradise. You want to take me here, you want to take me there. But I'm going to warn you now, can't take me anywhere. This the way I hear harmonies. There's not like a right or wrong to it. It's it's that's just the part that I naturally come up with. Um, I like I like things that are like a ascending and descending. It's just ultimately finding an interval that works alongside what the lead is doing. So let's go ahead and do a double of that. Touch, I do it on my own. My mama told me once. My teacher told me twice. If you like trouble, baby. Then I'm your paradise. You want to take me here. You want to take me there. But I'm going to warn you now. Can't take me anywhere. OK, so there you go. So that's that's a pretty good, pretty good base of a vocal for a chorus of that song. Now, you may ultimately choose to add different things to it, to add other harmony layers. But for now, I mean, that's that's kind of the meat and potatoes of really the vocal recording process. You can get into counter melodies. You can get into ad-libs and hype tracks and, and all kinds of things like that. But really the big thing here is you just want to be getting it to a place where you feel inspired listening to it. And, and some of that is these plugins that I've put on it. Just when you listen back, it makes it sound kind of polished already. And that's a good thing. So um, that's all we're going for here in this section. So really that ultimately is kind of the, 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 the process of how I do it. And, and, and you just go through section by section and before you know it, you've got your whole song. So that's my process. I'm glad you got to see what it looks like when I record vocals. This is a process that I've built up through the years and years of breaking into the music industry. And this is a process I used on the track that got me my first Grammy Award, especially once I put it through my editing and mixing process, which I'm gonna be posting a link to here. Or you can click the link in the description below. In the description below, I also include links to all of the microphones, pop filters, and audio interfaces that I mentioned. So if you're interested in any of those, be sure to check those out. If you want, shoot us your work to the email listed in the description, and we'd love to hear it. As always, if this video was helpful, hit the like and subscribe button as we're working every day to bring you tips, not only on music production, but on music business as well. We really are here to serve you and to help you along your journey through the music industry.